Hi, my name is Amy and I deliver DBT within the Older Persons Service in Derwentside. The purpose of this series of videos is to provide an overview of the DBT skills as outlined in the DBT Manual 2nd Edition by Marsha Linehan. For people in formal skills training, the handouts and worksheets will be available from your local DBT team. For those who are not, a book is available to purchase online. It is important to note, however, that these series of videos do not in themselves constitute a DBT therapy, but are intended to support those in formal DBT and for information for those who are not. Those who are not but would like to be should contact their local community mental health service to discuss availability in their area. So mindfulness, what do we do? The what skills are what we do when practising mindfulness. Each what skill is a distinct activity like walking, riding a bike or swimming. What skills are three separate activities? So what skills are practiced one at a time? The three skills are observing, describing or participating in the moment. If you haven't watched the first two of these three videos, which outline the skills of observing and describing, it may be helpful to do so now. So this video will outline the third what skill, participate. The handouts that may be beneficial to refer to for this skill a mindfulness handout for taking hold of your mind what skills and mindfulness handout for C ideas for practicing participating. So what do we mean by participating? Participating is entering wholly and with awareness into life itself, non-judgmentally in the present moment. Participating is the ultimate goal of mindfulness. So why do we participate and why can it be helpful? The first reason is to experience flow. The state of flow is widely considered an optimal experience. It is incompatible with boredom and is associated with intense enjoyment and a sense of control. The state of flow is an essential characteristic of peak experience. So for example, you may have experienced a state of flow if you've ever been completely immersed in an activity like running or skiing as this can give you a sense of maximum well-being or a sense of ecstasy. Also in a state of flow and when we are participating, there is an effortless of action. So things that may take great effort seem effortless. We become completely absorbed in what we are doing and in what is happening. We are aware of a sense of movement, of speed and ease. Life and what we are doing become like a dance. Secondly, participating is not compatible with self-consciousness. So when we fully immerse ourselves into what we are doing, there is a merging of action and awareness. So we are no longer aware of ourselves as separate from what we are doing. Thirdly, participating is incompatible with a sense of exclusion. So when we throw ourselves wholly into something, we are no longer aware of ourselves as separate from what we are doing or from our environment. We forget ourselves and therefore forget ourselves as outside or inside, so we cannot feel excluded. Fourthly, in, in participating, we are present to our own lives and the lives of our loved ones. When we become what we are doing, we do not miss our own lives. We also do not miss being part of the lives of others. In order to be compassionate or caring towards ourselves or others, we need to be present. So the final reason why participating is helpful is because participating is a key part of skillful behaviour. In order to become experts in any task, we must practice. Expertise requires mindful awareness of the task without distractions or becoming distracted by our thoughts, such as thinking about ourselves or thinking about others. For example, in great acting, an actor becomes the role. In the Olympics, gymnasts let their bodies do the work. If they think too much about what they are doing, it actually makes it more challenging to skillfully complete the task, to engage in the gymnastic routine or the role of acting. So what do we do to participate? So we can use the example of crossing the road to think about what we do. We're often taught as children to stop, look and listen before we cross the road. The first two mindfulness what skills of observing and describing are like stop, look and listen. Participating is like walking across the road. 
after you have stopped, looked and listened, you can really throw yourself completely into the action of crossing the road. As I've said, participating involves throwing ourselves completely into activities and not separating ourselves from ongoing events or interactions. We're not avoiding something, not thinking about something else, but immersing ourselves in the moment, becoming completely engaged and involved with the activity or the moment we're in. So if it's raining, we just play in the puddles like a kid would and enjoy the rain. Step back from participating in an activity when you are making errors or you don't know how to do something. When you are participating, you're very aware, but you are not actively focusing your attention on yourself and analysing the details of what you are doing. At times, you must step back, slow down and pay attention to what you're doing. In particular, when you notice there's a problem in your life, you need to step back and actively observe and describe both the problem situation and your responses to it. You can figure out what's wrong, learn the skills needed to solve the problem and then return to participating. You can only play the piano really well if you participate in the act of playing, that is if you play fully. But if you've learnt an incorrect technique, you may want to learn the correct version. To do so, you have to step back and observe and describe what you've been doing wrong, then practice the correct way over and over until you're skilled. You can then stop observing and participate again. So we step back from participating in order to understand and improve things. So let's participate. Sit in a comfortable, alert position. I'm going to sing the verse of a song. When I move to the second verse, join in with me. I know a song that'll get on your nerves, get on your nerves, get on your nerves. I know a song that'll get on your nerves, get on your nerves, all together now. I know a song that'll get on your nerves, get on your nerves, get on your nerves. I know a song that'll get on your nerves, get on your nerves. So what did you notice during that exercise? Did you notice any thoughts such as, I feel silly, or can someone see or hear me doing this? Take a moment to reflect on what you noticed. See if it applies at all in your day-to-day -day routine. Pause this video if need be. Handout 4C gives some extra ideas for practice and participating. Sometimes people may have trouble with the skill of participating. This can be especially true for people who are shy, afraid of failing or socially anxious. All they do is stay on the sidelines and observe. Others may have busy or analytical minds. They stay back from living in the moment because they are analysing, thinking and ruminating about each event as it occurs. So they are not fully participating. Instead, life becomes like a running commentary and describing is in overdrive. Other people may participate all of the time and that is their problem. They do not notice they are participating in a way that is driving other people crazy. Practice the mindfulness skill you find most difficult. Different people have trouble with different skills. Remember, you can only do one skill at a time. Observing is wordless watching. You can't describe what you can't observe. And participating brings you wholly into the present moment. As a recap of the mindfulness what skills, please refer to Mindfulness Handout 4, Taking Hold of Your Mind What Skills. And for ideas for practising each skill, please refer to handout 4A for observation, 4B for describing, and handout 4C for participating. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful.